Welcome to the One Minute Apologist. One Minute Apologist. We interview the world's leading apologists to provide credible answers to curious questions. Jason, when it comes to this whole idea of the flood, you know, sometimes people say, oh, it was a local flood or it was a worldwide flood. Was it really a worldwide flood? What would you say? That's a great question. Again, here you have a question that has two different views, two big prominent views on both sides, even within the Christian community. I would, I would say there's three pieces of evidence to convince people whether it was a local flood or a worldwide flood. I tend to think it's a worldwide flood because of the context of scripture, but also the evidence that we see. For example, when you look at the surface features of the earth, I mean, for example, look at, look at the Grand Canyon, the Coconino Valley sandstone, which is over 200,000 square feet of miles of, of the sedimentary rocks that are embedded with fossils and plantations. We see the strata that look like it was rapidly deposited through, again, a flood. Well, you see the same pieces of evidence in these sedimentary rocks in the strata and in Sydney, Australia with the Hawkesbury sandstone. And so if you have two different parts of the earth that have the same types of evidence of the surface features of the earth, now, a lot of people would make the case, uh, people who um, hold to gradualism, for example, would say that these are different um, cataclysmic events in these local settings, but we see this all over the world. But those are just two of the primary, the big hot spots, if you will, for, for, for fossilization. So I would tend to think that the worldwide flood, we can see it through the surface features of the earth. The second thing that we, we got to consider is, again, the size and the dimensions of the ark. If in fact the flood was only a local thing in the Mesopotamia area, there was no need then for Noah to build such a massive boat as he did uh, and to carry the different type of animals that he carried. I mean, you're talking about a ship that's 450 feet long, 45 feet wide and 75 feet high. So it's 1.5 cubic feet of space inside this massive facility to house the, the animals and, and the food and the storage that they had and also for the dietary things and to cleanse it from, you know, from, you know, being fell. And, uh, you know, so he has all these things put in place and you think, why would he have to do that if this, if, if the area was just a local flood? So that, in that sense, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. The third element I would think giving a piece of evidence to suggest a, a worldwide flood is the fact that over 500 global, you know, stories of the flood had, are, are in all these different ethnic groups. That tends to imply that after the Tower of Babel and people scatter and went abroad, that they carried with them a story of Noah's Ark. Of course, they adapted within their own people groups, but as they migrated, as they congregated in different areas, and as people found different regions, it's funny that when you look in Mexico, Romania, and Italy, and Canada, and Australia, and Russia, there, there are worldwide flood stories that they all have in their ethnic groups. That tends to suggest that it's because it came from an original story that has been adapted through time. So again, some people refute that and say that doesn't necessarily uh, suggest that there was a worldwide flood. But I actually throw in a fourth one. This is a free bonus. Okay, Bobby. <laughs> we like bonuses. Yeah. The, the fourth thing I would look at is, again, when you look at the context of Scripture, it implies that it was a worldwide flood. And if the Scripture is infallible in what it says, then I tend to hold to that. And then we'll look at the evidence, the service feature of the earth, the dimensions of the ark, things I mentioned before. But, but, G, but God, when Genesis 6, when he looked upon the earth, he was displeased, grieved, he was angry towards the wickedness, the inclination that they had to sin. And he was going to wipe out all mankind, including the animals and the birds. And he was only going to save eight souls, as we know. So that was not applying just to a local area, some people would suggest, because there was more people living beyond the Mesopotamia area. So, and again, if that was the case, I think that God himself, who's the creator of the heavens and the earth, would have implied that in the context. But Noah and the rest of his family knew that this was going to be a global impact, not just in a local sense. When you look at the ark, it symbolizes redemption because the judgment through the flood was a worldwide flood. It was God's judgment on the sin of mankind, not in a local sense, but in a global sense. But, the, but, but we also think of the rainbow, it is also a sign of God's protection, God's promise that he would protect us. Why? Because when you look at the evidence around the world, this catastrophic event that looked like this world went through, it tends to imply that there was a worldwide flood.